Tonight to discuss more on the crucial issues facing the global supply chain is Bendia Vakil. She is the CEO of Resolink. That's a supply chain risk management company. Thank you so much for taking your time on this Sunday night to speak with us. Thank you for inviting me. So this is a multi-pronged problem, right? What are all the factors contributing to the supply chain problems we're experiencing? It's a crisis on multiple fronts, but in, um, in the beginning, if you can think about it, it's a talent crisis. Um, supply chains are um, constantly moving products from point A to point B, and this is not an automated thing. You need workers at every level, truck drivers, ocean freight, all of this, warehouses, all of these are operated by people. And in certain cases, particularly fuel trucks or anything that you transport that is inflammable, you can't just put somebody to drive a truck that that is um, that has a license. So when you need specialized talent, we also have an issue here where there's a huge imbalance. We have a container shortage, a rail car um, imbalance. We have a truck driver shortage. Um, the, the backlog at the different ports, um, the stoppages across China and Malaysia and other countries due to COVID, all of this has created imbalance where supply chains would normally flow seamlessly. Now there are these stops and goes at various points. By the way, this has persisted now for two years. And so at this point, there's also a huge morale issue among the workers in the supply chain because not everyone is vaccinated or has access to vaccines scenes globally. And so there's a crisis of talent here that we are dealing with. I can only imagine how frustrating that must be if you're one of the people trying to keep this going for the entire world. So you would basically break it down to COVID, right? Multiple factors stemming from the pandemic. Yeah, the pandemic created that very first initial turbulence in the water and the water never got a chance to settle, right? So because of COVID, we had to keep social distancing protocols. We had to call certain industries essential. Um, by the way, transportation um, it, workers are not currently considered essential and prioritized for vaccines. So a very small percentage of them have access to vaccines. Countries have also not aligned on what um, vaccine is allowed. So in some places, people have to quarantine because they don't have the right kind of vaccine. Then you have um, an issue where at various points of entry, people have to wait, like you just saw, hours in line. They can't see their families for months at a time. Working hours have extended. Um, so it's just a very difficult time right now for anyone involved in the supply chain, in moving products, um, you know, working in warehouses, long hours, and um, shortages, and therefore the people who are in the workforce are expected to do um, more for less. And as you just mentioned, world leaders from international chambers of commerce uh, of shipping a few days ago sent out that letter warning of a global transport system collapse if governments don't restore what they called freedom of movement to transport workers and give them vaccine priority. So what would that actually look like? I mean, how do you even go about making that uniform? It's very difficult, as you know, um, different governments don't have alignment on what their quarantine protocols is. There's no um, ease of movements at various points of entry between countries or regions. As a result, the truck drivers are facing the brunt of it. On the ocean side, you know, workers have, um, the, the people who work on the ocean freighters, they have not seen their families for months. Um, they're not allowed to go and disembark and get some relief even for a few hours. And so um, that's the kind of thing that causes a mass exodus, if you will, or, or it, we risk a mass exodus, I should say, because it causes morale issues, as I've said. Um, and people want to be able to just have a human moment, you know. Um, so we, this is the big risk, what the world leaders are looking at right now. Um, what we need is a few simple things. We, and, and I know it sounds simple, but it's very difficult to align on rules and regulations between countries. But that is the need of the hour. All right. um, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry we have to wrap it up. It's, a, it's an interesting, fascinating topic. We could go on all night, but we have to run. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Absolutely.